Anderson Cooper 360, weeknights at 8 and 10 on CNN. With part one of an investigative series that we're calling Rehab Racket, because as you'll see, starting tonight, that's exactly what it is. We're talking about the abuse of a state-sponsored, taxpayer-funded program that on paper looks like a noble cause. Privately run rehab clinics getting Medicaid money by billing for each addict who gets counseling. But over the past year, an investigation by CNN and the Center for Investigative Reporting has found a system riddled with fraud and poor oversight, from billing the government for phony patients to allowing convicted felons to run drug rehab centers. Our investigation found it is all too easy to take advantage of the very people who need help the most. And this is no nickel and dime fraud, because it's happening in California. We're talking about big money. State and federal taxpayers are on the hook for tens of millions of dollars every year. I said federal tax dollars, or put another way, it's your money. Investigative correspondent Drew Griffin tonight. Keep it honest. Mr. Aluno, mm -hmm. Drew Griffin with CNN. How mm -hmm. are you? George Aluno has run a taxpayer-funded drug rehab business in Southern California for the past six years, which is surprising because for the last 11 years, he's been on a list of people banned from billing Medicaid. Convicted of student loan fraud, George Aluno should never have been allowed to even open this clinic called GB Medical. What was going on? I'm asking a few questions, sir, about the drug rehab business. I want to ask you about, you know, you seem to be at the center of the fraud allegations no, here. No, 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 no. Yeah. Have you been faking no, no, no. signatures onto uh, sheets of paper and billing the state for the money? Guess what else? Eluno is facing felony criminal charges for ripping off the state, allegedly getting paid by taxpayers to rehab drug abusers who weren't even there. Excuse me, sir, how can you build a state for clients that don't exist? Mr. Mr. Aluno, Mr. Aluno, just one second, sir. We never saw Aluno again. Aluno's drug rehab business here in Southern California has been part of the largest Medicaid program in the nation, paid for with federal and state dollars. A one-year investigation by CNN and the Center for Investigative Reporting found the rehab portion of that program, called Drug Medical, is rife with fraud, has operators who bill the government for made-up clients and often get away with it. Joy Jarfors saw plenty of fraud in the nine years she spent working as a supervisor over Drug Medical. I believe that the word got out that there was easy money to be made in the outpatient drug-free system. How and bad is it? It's bad. It was real bad. Um, I left um, state service about three years ago, and um, we would have one provider that would bill for over a million dollars in one year that we believe was 100% questionable billing. And that one provider was no isolated instance. Over and over, we found examples of fraud, not hidden fraud. This was happening in plain sight. For example, Georgia Luno. 19-year-old Darshay Miles was just 14 when she went to his rehab center, along with her mother and three sisters. It's against the law to pay drug rehab clients, but that apparently didn't stop Aluno. Miles said he paid her and other clients $5 each time they signed in for group counseling, all so he could then charge Medi-Cal between $28 and $61 per signature. At first, I didn't know it was illegal. I didn't know nothing about I thought it was just a thing you supposed to get paid to go in there until people was like, oh, George was like, you got to don't speak out loud about the money. And what did she do with the $5 given to her by the drug rehab center? She bought drugs. We was going just to get the money to buy weed. You know, so my whole, my under, my whole thing was like, y'all was paying us to get high. The day after our interview, the state charged Iluno and three of his employees at GB Medical with grand theft in connection with more than 2,000 phony bills for rehab dating back to 2009. He's pled not guilty. But records show your tax dollars still paid him even after he was arrested and out on bail. Iluno's attorney blamed the billing practices 
on counselors and employees who were not well supervised. The attorney says Iluna was a certified counselor himself who was allowed to bill Medicaid. Despite that, the clinic voluntarily shut down July 1st without explanation. CNN and the Center for Investigative Reporting reviewed thousands of records in California's drug Medi-Cal program, including program audits. We analyzed patient billings, even watched clinics undercover to see who was getting treatment and who wasn't. The result? We found that in the last two fiscal years, half of the nearly $186 million spent for drug Medi-Cal, about $94 million, went to clinics that have shown questionable billing practices or signs of fraud. Case in point, the man with the cigar, a convicted felon named Alexander Ferdman. Ferdman was the organizer. Marshall Vogt was the lead investigator who helped prosecute Alexander Ferdman back in 2000 for running a Texas-based crime syndicate that staged car crashes ripping off big insurance companies. He lists his occupation as a driver of an ice cream truck. <laughs> Ferdman pled guilty to organized crime and was sentenced to seven years in a Texas prison. He served just one year, was let out early for good behavior, and ended up in California. Even though felons are barred from running drug medical centers, Ferdman soon opened a rehab clinic called Able Family Support. Taxpayer-funded drug rehab has been easy money for Alexander Ferdman. Despite his organized crime conviction in Texas, his California drug Medi-Cal contract is now worth about $2 million a year. His salary, $180,000. Even after a 2011 review by Los Angeles County found evidence of what it considers to be fraudulent practices at his business, Ferdman was allowed to expand. Drew Griffin with CNN, how you doing? I'd like to ask you some questions you. about your business, if I could. I really don't have time right now. Well, you can explain, how can a guy with a record like you be operating a drug rehab clinic here in California? I mean, you've been this convicted in a, a major insurance car crash scheme in Texas? I was convicted, but it's not what it seems. That's first of all, and second, whatever happened, I don't know, 15 years ago, uh, what relevance does it have to today? Does the county know about your criminal record? They probably do, I don't know. What happened in Texas, Ferdman told us, should stay in Texas. Because I was facing 99 years and I chose to, you know, pick a much smaller sentence without any of it, because, you know, I could have a much worse. It's a, uh, but there was no fraud and there was no uh, record of it in any way. Well, how, it's I mean, a very how long could you story. Say that? that was I a huge. Say, that I, was a huge case in Austin, Texas, uh, statewide, actually. Yeah, that's what they tried to build it, but and that's why they pursued it. But uh, it wasn't what it seems, and what they said it was. Could you tell it's me real funny. quickly how you left Texas and decided to come here and get into this business? How easy or hard I was that? I don't want to talk about it right now, so. With such apparent widespread fraud in the program, former supervisor Joy Jarfer says it's not just taxpayers who are being cheated. I'm not a, um, you know, a, the employee anymore that has to look at this every day, but I'm a taxpayer that knows that this is going on and it angers me. And there's story after story after story about Medicaid dollars being cut from people who need the services. It's an incredible investigation, Drew, and, and it's just so infuriating because I mean, there's a lot of people who do need help, and there's probably a lot of good clinics out there, and this certainly gives a bad name to, to, to the industry. Is the state doing anything about these clinics? Well, finally, they are beginning to state down. I, I, the state is cracking down. I think once they realize the depth of our reporting, Anderson, and that it would be aired nationally on your show, the state announced a statewide crackdown. Alexander Ferdman's clinic, the felon from Texas, his clinic has been shut down. 16 others it's been shut down. Shut down. 16 others temporarily suspended, and California has announced a statewide review of the entire rehab clinic program, although the details are a bit sketchy right Why now. Why did it take so long, though? <laughs> that, that was my first question to the state of California, and as we continue our reporting, I think it's going to be your question and all your viewers' question, because as we will reveal tomorrow night, 
report after report, investigation after investigation, year after year, finds the county and state investigators were finding this mm. fraud, finding these questionable billing practices, and yet the clinics remained open, and we believe kept billing taxpayers for this. And that's the thing. It's taxpayer money. And it's again, the people who need money. help aren't getting it. It's yeah. incredible, Drew. Okay, we're, we're going to uh, have that part two tomorrow night. Uh, you also can make a difference. You've got a tip for Drew. Let him know. Just go to CNN.com slash investigate. And let us know what you think about Drew's report. Follow me on Twitter at Anderson Cooper.